the release of the Apple Vision Pro, we've entered a new era of VR naysayers who believe it's their right. No, their duty to let us all know that VR has no place in modern society. That it's a blight on all of mankind. And oh, by the way, VR is dead. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, I think I went a little overboard, but you get the point. So why do the critics claim VR is dead? And why do I believe their claims are invalid? We'll take them one by one. Point number one, I don't wanna wear something heavy on my face. So I can understand this one as the fit and weight of a headset is not an uncommon issue, but it seems they haven't considered it will get smaller because of course it will get fricking smaller. Just as every technology gets smaller and therefore lighter and overall just more comfortable. Plus, just because it's uncomfortable for you doesn't mean it's uncomfortable for everyone. Form factors change, so you have to think beyond today. So, point number two, <laughs> it's just so expensive. When the current age of VR kicked off, you needed a decent gaming PC with a fairly capable 3D video card and a VR solution like an HTC Vive or an Oculus Rift. This was easily fifteen to $2,500, and I agree that was a hefty chunk of change. However, today, most VR gaming is played on mobile VR headsets, which don't require a PC and range from $200 for a Quest 2 to $500 for a Quest 3 or Pico 4. And these are standalone devices that don't require a PC, but get this, you can connect it to your PC if you wish. And on top of that, the games are usually less than PC games, so <laughs> expensive my Point three. There are no good VR games, just a bunch of tech demos. Every new technology has only a few applications out the gate. And I agree that VR was initially a lot of demos and short games, but we now live in 2024 and the VR industry has a whole suite of fantastic games, including, but not limited to, Walkabout Mini Golf, Demio, Asgard's Wrath 1 and 2, Ghost of Tabor, Bone Lab, The Walking Dead, Assassin's Creed Nexus, Arizona Sunshine 1 and 2, Ancient Dungeon, Resident Evil. That's not to say VR doesn't have its fair share of tech demos, but have the old school PC gamers forgotten about shareware? A whole long list of now celebrated games started as demos from small developers like Wolfenstein 3D, Doom, and Minecraft for notch sake. Hello. Minecraft. Things move a lot slower when you're living through a moment and we're living in VR's beginning moments right now. And I think a lot of the critics have conveniently forgotten or are ignorant of the many years it took before games grew from this to this in the many more years before we arrived at this. So although VR doesn't have a lot of AAA games and its user base is not yet massive, it has many more high quality, fully realized games than it released. And its user base has grown and continues to grow year after year. Point four, it's an accessory like 3D television. I cannot disagree that VR started as an accessory for the PC, but VR is now a standalone device with its own games and applications. It doesn't even need a PC or console. Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> to say VR is just an accessory shows how out of touch they are in regard to VR. And you know, that's okay as no one can know everything, but it's not okay to act as an expert when you don't know all the facts. Point five, VR makes people sick. There is truth to this one, although exaggerated, as just using VR does not make you sick, nor do most VR games and experiences. Once again, VR naysayers conveniently forget people can get sick playing first-person shooters on a flat display. But many VR players are also to blame, as they stick their friends and family into roller coaster simulators, giving them a terrible first-time experience. And on the subject of roller coasters, people drive far and pay a lot of money to ride them, knowingly tempting sickness, because, get this, they think it's worth the risk, and the fun is worth tempting fate. And they know along the way they'll learn which rides make them sick and which don't so they can have a better experience the next time. And this approach to discovering what amusements work for you and which make you sick is seen as totally acceptable by the general public. So why should VR be any different? So a claim something could make you sick doesn't mean it will make you sick. And if you get sick, maybe you learn why you got sick so you don't get sick the next time, which is like <laughs> totally sick. <laughs> Clearly, I don't think VR is dead, which means there has to be something on the horizon, right? Sure, and it's called augmented reality, or AR. But wait, AR isn't VR? <laughs> Gotcha, Mr. VR man. 
No, AR isn't VR, but the two technologies contain so much overlap that companies like Meta and Apple have included AR in their VR solution. And eventually, VR will be in their AR solution. Hey, you got your chocolate and my peanut you got butter. peanut butter and my chocolate. They're so intertwined, it's difficult to say the Quest or Vision Pro are first and foremost a VR or AR device. And as AR grows, so will VR. And that hardware will get smaller, lighter, and less expensive. And before you know it, we'll see all the naysayers wearing their tiny, fashionable AR device. And that's when we can say, na 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 boo boo, stick your head in doo doo. We were right and you were wrong. And isn't that what life is really all about? I'm kidding, mostly. Do you love VR? Well, of course you do. Then check out one of my first videos where I did my best to illustrate VR for the uninitiated. You should share it with the ones you love. So thank you so much for watching and make sure to leave a comment, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.